Deal sourcing in the UK for dummies slash beginners. So let's start straight off the bat, what is deal sourcing? You may have heard of it being called deal sourcing, deal packaging. In America, they call it wholesaling. All of these make sense, call it whatever you like, nobody really cares. The simple part of this is we are going to find a deal. We're gonna do the numbers, negotiate a discount ideally, or a good price at least. So I always say you are essentially an estate agent in reverse. So estate agents will go and get the property, put it on the market, find a buyer, and they will charge the seller of the deal, not the buyer of the deal. We will go and charge the buyer of the deal, not the seller of the deal, typically. However, it is entirely possible to charge both sides here, depending on what allows us to do in the deal. Now, I'm gonna give you a few expert level tips, but mostly this is gonna be beginner stuff, how to get started, how to get making money. So there's gotta be some pros, there's gotta be some cons. I'm gonna run through them here, and so you can get a good understanding of whether you want to do this strategy or not. For me, I always recommend to people that deal sourcing should always be part of every property business. Every single property business should have a deal sourcing arm. It should sit at the bottom of your triangle. You will be looking for blocks of flats. You will be marketing for blocks of flats, speaking to estate agents, other deal sources, all of this stuff. Pro number one, little or no investment to get you started. So because deal sourcing is simply a service in which you offer, you don't really need anything to set up. You don't need an office. You can work from home. You can work from a cafe. You can work from wherever. All you need is to have a mobile phone. And if you're gonna be working with private clients and not co-sourcing, you will need to be compliant. Now there are levels of compliance that you need to cover. You need to be ICO, you need to be PRS, you need to have a um, few different insurance policies. The first con, what don't, what isn't good about this? And the big thing out there is that property is considered passive all of the time. Well, deal sourcing is not passive. Obviously, it's a service. Anything service-based removes the passiveness. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, because what we can do further down the line is use all of this, all of these investor money over here, and then we can all of the deals that are coming over to us, all left, right, and center, we can bind the two and we buy the, pr the properties that we want using the investor funds and create a passive property portfolio that way. So this is a long-term game. Let's do this first, get some experience, work with investors, find the deals, get good relationships with agents, earn loads of money, and then we can start to look into the long-term play. Pro number two, you are building your list of investors and your knowledge of the strategy or the area or whatever niche it is you choose. So that is everything. You're building a list of investors, people with money, people open to investing. How's that gonna help you? Well, everything in your business is gonna be based around these investors. Any funding you need, any bridging of funds. So if you need a 10 grand, 20 grand to get a refurb that's gone over budget over the line, reach out to your email list. They could be there, give them a good interest rate. They've trusted you, you've done some deals in the past, they've seen your posts. That's gonna be so invaluable. And then you've got the finding of the deals. Who doesn't want to have a complete list of deals coming across their desk day in, day out? When you get to a point in which you're gonna start deploying your own funds and start purchasing property, you just cherry pick the best ones. Con number two, we kind of alluded to it. You don't own a portfolio. So all of this work is just going on fees, 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 fees. Big motherfucking fees, can I just point out? but fees nonetheless, and it is earned income. So we're not building a portfolio, but what we are doing is building the foundations of a business in which can go and build a portfolio very quickly. So just think about this. You're not gonna go and start buying tower blocks after being on a little property course. We have to earn our stripes. We have to take our steps, because if you skip too many, you will burn out, get it wrong, lose money, lose reputation. All of these things are catastrophic to a long-term profitable business. We start where we need to start. And by starting with a service-based business for investors with money, great, giving them a great service, great deals, and being able to problem solve, taking away the stress of that investor, then you will build reputation, relationships, and ultimately understanding of how the business works. Final pro number three, lucrative. 
When I say lucrative, this is a very lucrative business model. Go and look at estate agents and what they're earning on their fees. Just, just take a look at that. We don't need a fancy office. We don't need to go through the hoops in which they go through. We don't need in-person rubbish viewers who don't know what they're doing. We do this in reverse. So we find the investor looking for a property deal, a property type, a property in an area, and we go and shop in for them. We go find them that deal, which might be through an estate agent, and then we give them that deal. They're already aware of the fee, so they're happy with them, and they're already out there looking. You are providing a service in which they need so badly, and then we ping them over here. The best bit is if you can go direct to the vendor and secure a good deal, there is no reason why you can't charge a fee to the buyer and the seller. Switch them over to the seller and the buyer. But don't get greedy with this. People, in my experience, go from working a job that earns them two grand a month and takes up their entire time and all they have is their weekends, to starting a business and making three grand per fee, to then very quickly getting greedy and then I won't get out of bed for three grand. So we need to keep our eye on the ball. What is the whole purpose of your business? Number one it is to get started, get out your job, earn good money, understand the business. Number two, providing a service for your clients. The happier they are, the more they will return, the more they will tell people, and the more they're willing to work with you when it comes down to joint venture partnerships or investing in your deals, not their own. Third and final is the profit part. If, we have a, if we've done the work on a deal and the numbers will only work if there's a thousand pound fee there and you've got an investor saying, I'll have it if you can get them numbers, that I'm doing that deal every time. The work's been done. All you're doing is going, there you go, Mr. Investor, because it's delayed gratification. You want to tell that investor, look, we've worked together before. I know this deal only works if I take a thousand pound fee. I want to let you know that the fee would have been five grand. I've taken it for a grand because you're a returning customer or I want you to become a returning customer. I'm going to make sure everything I can do to get this deal done in the exact same way. You're not going to get less of a service because I've charged less of a fee. Please do me a favor though. Recommend me. Go to one of the re review sites or whatever. Recommend me. Tell people about what you, your experience and help me get some more clients on board and I'd love you to be a returning client. That is just incredible to an investor. The final con is that deal sourcing has a very bad reputation. The problem with deal sourcing is it's relatively unregulated. There are the insurances we have to get and we have to be a part of PRS and all these different things. But re realistically, they do fuck all. If someone wanted to run away with your fee and not give you the deal, they could. If that deal wasn't secured and it got taken or the investor couldn't get the deal done properly because the owner refused to show them or produce information or the deal was just pulled from the table, then you may struggle to get a refund from a lot of people. So my advice to investors, number one, is due diligence. Speak to previous clients and make sure they had a good experience and if they didn't, how was it dealt with? That's more important than having a good experience in my view. Bit like going to a restaurant and the serve and the food comes out and it's cold and the server comes over, deals with it really well, brings over a whole round of um, free drinks to the table and apologise, brings out the best meal you've ever had. That to me will be more memorable and make me want to go back to that restaurant more than if everything was just okay. So keep that in mind. Due diligence, investors, please. I'm not saying don't pay a fee up front. We charge a fee up front because it's fair. How can we go and trust you saying, yeah, I'll go and buy that with no fee down. There is no money exchange. Therefore, you could just take forever. The deal gets lost because of your fault and we've lost all of that work to get that property where an inv another investor could have taken it. So we charge a percentage upfront of that fee. We keep it in a holding um, account for our investors. So it never goes into our own account. It goes into a holding account. And that's important, but again, young start deal sources might not have that in play just yet because it is something that you need to kind of um, have had a decent run of a business to be able to be given that opportunity in the banks. Even a new, even a new deal sourcer, I wouldn't be afraid of. I'd just be, just be wary of what's being asked up front. 
um, and do your due diligence ultimately. If there's anyone else that can kind of give a character reference for a new deal sourcer, then, then try and get those. Um, I would say a 50% fee up front would be fair to secure the deal and make sure that um, that deal was taken and yours and that that deal sourcer can go ahead and do what they do best, which is to make sure it's secure and get the thing bought in a timely manner. However, if you feel like I've missed anything, comment below with anything you think I've missed and I'll be more than happy to answer by message or do a new video if I think there's enough in it. Obviously, press the subscribe button and if you can, at any point, share this around to people, I would be really grateful because I just want to help people find their way out of the bullshit that is expensive property training that is really not necessary and please make use of all the free resources that I've put in the description as well because it's gonna help you um, move forward really quickly. And that's it from me. See you on the next video.